Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. First off, can you tell us a, a little bit about yourself and your background and a little bit about well, your, your life? Uh, well, I started out uh, as a journalist at Time Magazine, the New York Times, Rolling Stone, interview a lot of others. And then a long way, uh, wrote uh, three novels and uh, three books of nonfiction. I've appeared on uh, television, uh, CNN, uh, spoken at conferences. Um, I was a co-founder of a dot-com in the mid-90s called Total New York. I was bought by AOL, and then I worked on international launches <coughs> of AOL and the dot-com AOL. And then uh, wrote another book about uh, intellectual property uh, and co-founded a couple of businesses, most recently uh, something called the Content Creators Alliance, uh, which I co-founded in partnership with uh, Jakob Magnusson, a uh, well-known musician and businessman and filmmaker in Iceland. And uh, most recently, well, my most recent book was Swarm, which was a science fiction novel uh, about uh, what happens when uh, electronic dance music intersects with uh, government mind control software. And uh, I'm working on a new book uh, about the future of intellectual property. Amazing. What's the new book called? The Future of Intellectual Property. Amazing. Amazing. And... Um, what do you see as the future of intellectual property? Um, well, there are a lot of different dimensions to this. Uh, intellectual property goes back to ancient times. Um, it was a way of granting license. Uh, in the early days, it was usually by kings, and this is true also in medieval times, uh, to sanctify and permit uh, the exchange of goods or, or knowledge. Um, and that uh, kind of took off during the Enlightenment after Gutenberg. <clears throat> the Enlightenment after Gutenberg. And, uh, and it continues to this day. But, you know, uh, it's interesting that back in the 1600s, for example, when people first started printing books, uh, a whole industry across Europe mainly uh, broke out of people who were copying, uh, uh, you know, books uh, un that were unlicensed, and they would change change the books. They would do bad bad versions of the books, but then if they wanted to, they could even change what the book said, and then they would distribute them with the name of the author. Um, so this actually became an international issue uh, back in. The 1600s, um, a lot of the books that were being published in England were being republished in Ireland and then distributed for half the price. Uh, and with, with many uh, errors, uh, uh, re-edits that changed the meaning of, of the books and, and so forth. So uh, eventually it, it, it inspired um, a uh, kind of a copyright proclamation that all the countries agreed to so that the author would have control and be able to protect what they wrote and how it was distributed. And that's sort of one of the, one of the threads. And it, and it continued into the United States Constitution, which, which uh, explicitly points out that intellectual property and the uh, output of, of creative people um, should be protected and supported by the Congress, and that has continued to this day. 
So what my, uh, besides the history of intellectual property, it's a way of getting into the future of intellectual property, which in a nutshell, um, mainly through technology, but also social change and cultural change, the guidelines for how intellectual property can be protected in the age of, in a digital world, um, they basically, they're behind the ball on this. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things that should be done and could be done. And that's uh, and that keys in with uh, the Content Creators Alliance, which is how um, artists, people in the music business, uh, writers, uh, inventors, uh, creative people of all kinds, uh, how can how do they navigate uh, a digital world? Where um, I was just um, talking to a sculptor, for example, who he's worried that. We're getting to a point where people can walk into a gallery, take a picture of a piece on their phone, press a button and have it printed out on a 3D printer uh, for you know, a fraction of what it would be if they, if they bought it themselves. So there, there are a lot of issues like that that need to be addressed. It's a pretty interesting subject and I'm excited about it. So, so where do you see, um, where do you see the, the field of intellectual property evolving in the near to short term future to uh, protect what needs to be protected and um, protect content creators, for example. Right. Well, there, there are two layers of it. And I guess maybe that fits in with the near and the farther. One of it is to uh, attract uh, attention to the, the issues and <clears throat> what uh, could be fixed. Uh, but also anticipating, you know, for example, uh, virtual reality um, and the ways that we interact with it, you know, it's going to get harder and harder for people to understand what their contributions might be in terms of ownership of their own property, uh, whether it's uh, pictures they make or artwork they make or dances they create. And then on the longer term, you know, how this uh, fits into, you know, a, a general evolution of, of what even work means and um, how you do it, where you do it. You know, we're living in a time right now where the, what was already happening, people beginning to work uh, digitally, remotely from their homes or, uh, you know, uh, while they're traveling. Um, because of the, the COVID crisis, uh, as, as it took a giant leap forward. So things like what we're doing now, Zoom, obviously, uh, and the ability to work at home without ever going into an office is, uh, you know, it's one of the things that has acceler been accelerated by the, the COVID crisis. Um, what other uh, trends in, in, in this field? Um, it, how do you feel that this COVID crisis, for example, plays into this trend that you're already seeing in place uh, as the, the shift uh, in, in how we perceive um, content creators, uh, intellectual property rights, and, and how that's shifting as the way we work and the way we operate is shifting? Well, as far as the, the COVID crisis, you know, what's happening right now, uh, I couldn't help watching on television and the marches and uh, you know, the, the violence and, and so forth is how, how people were responding. And, and this whole thing itself uh, happened because somebody was videotaping um, you know, the, the arrest and, and uh, an eventual death of uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis. And so that was the spark of it. Um, and then you have all these people <clears throat> with their cameras out. I mean, it was kind of interesting to watch, you know, thousands of people swarming down streets and, and more than half of them are walking around uh, experiencing what's happening through their camera phones. And, and that's, <laughs> that's new. That's new. And the amount and, and the speed and ubiquity of, of how those images are being shared to other people and uh, and being coordinated uh, on their marches or, or other things that they're trying to make happen, spreading the awareness, uh, creating the narrative, 
of what's happening, they're actually in competition with, uh, with TV cameras and, and, and the news media. So it, it, it's, it's, a new, it's a new ball game uh, of, of who owns, and this is another example of the future of intellectual property. Who owns the narrative of, um, of what they're taping, what they're videotaping, and who gets it, and who's responsible for that? Um, and now one of the other things that's happening is there's a lot of uh, discussion uh, of, of to what extent social media platforms and, and other applications um, are either responsible or should have more of an in, uh, impact or more of a uh, have more ways to uh, edit or censor or, uh, or write um, commentary on images or ban them. You know, in some cases they're just taking people off because they don't think it's appropriate. So this is, this is a game changer in, in so many ways. And on top of that, you know, you have all this violence, uh, a lot of <clears throat> festering, um, you know, social conflict, obviously race, but it goes, it goes beyond there. It's uh, economic shifts um, that uh, have, have been simmering. And, and this, this, this confluence of uh, a, a, a catastrophic, um, you know, viral crisis on top of an economic crisis, which is already showing signs of a political crisis and a, and a social transmutation uh, is, uh, we've never seen anything like it. So obviously it's a stressful time at the very least, uh, but personally I think uh, this is gonna open the door to, to change and, and different kinds of awareness. The other thing that people forget, you know, whether, whether you're on, uh, on the side of people who say, you know, this is a downward slide into the end of the world, or other people who say, this is, this is time to reassess our values, what we want to do, how we're gonna use technology, how we reintroduce fairness into our society, cooperation with the rest of the world instead of doing the opposite. Um, but one, one of the other things is that in, in, in our world today, um, time, you know, and when people say, you know, we're going this way or we're going that way, uh, it's, it assumes a linear yeah. pathway that, you know, A turns to B, uh, and then you, you get a decision tree to C or D. Uh, but in fact, uh, because of uh, VR and AR, <clears throat> virtual reality and, and uh, augmented reality, and the ability to make recordings live in the fly, personally, share them. It can be recy recycled, re-edited. Um, you know, words can be added. Uh, images can be changed. So you can set up. We're, we're, there, we are. There's already technology that would allow you to take <clears throat> a picture that you took, or someone else could take that picture and change it. Uh, in a way that you wouldn't, uh, people can't tell the difference between yeah. the, real, the real one and the fake one. But it gets distributed and picked up, and it it get, it metastasizes faster than people can even yeah understand, they, understand what's happening. So so they sorry, just to finish this thing. So we what we live in is is more of a cyclical loop where we are uh, thinking about the future and the past, <clears throat> and it's mixing with the present. So I think there's some two steps back, one step forward, or two steps forward, one step back. And to add to all the other things that are going on, um, you know, this sense of a linear progression of time uh, is, is changing into something different, something a little more cyclical, more of a multiverse of, of not just the time frame of how information is, is, is created and shared and, and uh, digested uh, but the but the virtual realities of what even the truth is yeah, uh, yeah. so that's showing up in social media and the news but it's it's happening in all all different parts of our lives so this is a, a dimension that people don't really talk about you know what what is real <laughs> who are we really <laughs> where do we want to go and how do we get there
Well, it's a very confusing time. You've touched on a lot of points. One of those being time, uh, because we, we essentially, you have people on both sides wanting or seeing things from different perspectives. I don't see myself as the doom and gloomer or the other side. I feel like, uh, at least in the U S we're like a, an alcoholic or a drug addict that needs to hit rock bottom before it can, you know, reemerge yeah. on the other side. But right. you, know, you can't just kind of come down a little bit and then expect to, you know, sometimes you often have to hit rock bottom completely. Right. Um, yeah, there has to be some, some yeah. breakdown for real change to happen. Exactly. So for me, it's kind of the short, medium term we have to go through this phase of purging uh, systems that weren't working of a past that I call the dying breath of the ignorant white man. And, you know, all these systems that we had in place from many of the boomers generation that is, is going to lead to a new generation picking up the baton and deciding what the future looks like that aligns with where they are spiritually, emotionally, um, psychologically. Um, but you, you touched on another point, which was the kind of the deep fake world, because now more than ever, I personally feel like people are more and more confused. I've never seen such, I've even done it myself where I've shared news that looked and seemed really real. Mm -hmm. And I later found out by reading more and looking into it, that it was actually fake. And I find that a lot of people are now sharing fake news. And I, and I often wonder myself, um, in these circumstances, and you talk about intellectual property aspect of it, but I always like to look at things and say, who is the most to benefit from doing a certain thing will mm -hmm. often lead you to kind of some reference of, you know, but where is all this fake news coming from? You know, because it is, everywhere and well, yeah. people are getting really confused and um and i had this wild theory that I was, I was thinking to myself if i were another country looking to disrupt the u.s you can't do it physically because we're so heavily guarded but you know if you could find ways to infiltrate and create many groups of mm -hmm. people and create a narrative around that or something that we're for or against and, you know, have that group have meetings and, you know, get those meetings to clash together, same locations and have deep fake videos and all these fake news to kind of help feed that narrative that they're trying to fill in their mind, Co you know, cognitive dissonance and people seeing that, that these, um, I, I just wonder, do you think that we're going to, how do you feel that we're going to shake this or evolve from these tribal uh, communities that are emerging and growing stronger in their, you know, now everyone's posting things like unfriend me if this, and if you don't believe this, then screw you. And, and it's really just black out or black out your screen and yeah, black out your screen. And it's really polarizing. Well, what are your thoughts? And I know it's a little bit, remove yeah. intellectual property per se but it's all oh, no, not not really because um that what you're talking about is is my greatest concern and my greatest hope you know the fact that uh, we can communicate so quickly um and and act together if we if we want to um you know gives us uh, a great chance to have that to build a new consensus on on who we are and where where we want to go as, as a nation, as a society, as, as a world. <clears throat> At the same time, what's happened in a surprisingly short amount of time is, you know, it used to be not very long ago where, you know, if you were uh, a hardcore liberal, you would see uh, Fox News as the place to get your fake news. And then if, if you were a hardcore conservative, you would go to MSNBC or uh, to, to get your liberal fake news. Um, but now, uh, virtually everyone, there are apps that, uh, that allow you and, and give you the power to create your own news. You know, we are, we are broadcasters. 
and, and we are content creators and we have enormous distribution and, and power to create even uh, social movement in the physical realm. And that's pretty new. And uh, so in addition to the, the specter possibility of foreign powers or uh, different underground or subversive groups, uh, but you know, the same thing is happening with people who wanna save animals. <laughs> you know, they're using the same tools <clears throat> to spread the word, to, to uh, you know, uh, create awareness. And then again, you have people who are individually broadcasting their own opinions, their own views, and they now have the tools to, to jigger the truth or, or repaint the narrative or uh, project their own perspective as, as what's happening. So that's, that's what's a little scary is, you know, when you have millions of different uh, opinions and and descriptions of not only what you would like to happen, but what actually happened, you know, that's kind of chaotic. You know, it turns into a kind of a, a, a you know, a multiverse where you, the, the up, up and down gets harder and harder to, to get everybody to agree on, on the very simplest thing. Yeah. So, uh, it's almost then, impossible to get people to agree on things now. It's, yeah. it's really tough. Because both sides' perspectives are so much more amplified by di alternative sources of media. Right. Whether it be fake on both sides or real on both sides or real on one side and fake on the other. And even who is, you know, that's why I like Ken Wilber's work when, it, when it, he talks a lot about um, perspective. But it's like, what angle is this shot from? What happened before that was shot? What happened after that was shot? I mean, the best ones are the ones that, you know, you could see the whole picture, but, and we're, we're subtracting the deep fake, you know, the, you see the one that's like, which one is Obama? And it has <laughs> them both saying something. You just don't know which one is Obama, but you know, they, everyone can t create this technology now, but you know, just looking beyond that, there's so many ways that one side can find to, you know, like, for example, you get one piece of news that comes in and then there's about Floyd, for example, and then there's all of this counter news about, for example, you know, protesters killing uh, people or loot, you know, so looting or attacking the cops and then you get the, or attacking the cops, the cops attacking even people who are pretty, you know, centric minded and try not to get too polarized. It's very, you know, you don't even know where to go because you're like, well, I, I don't think this is good. And I don't think this is good. Like, where is this? How do we resolve this? Right? Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, people are taking their own, taking what they think they're seeing or what they'd like to be seeing um, and reflecting it and broadcasting it back and sharing it very, very quickly on, on different platforms. So, the, you know, I saw the same thing happening. And, the, and by the way, this, this is a cascade. Uh, it's happening right now with Floyd, but um, just a few weeks ago, it was happening with, with the COVID itself, where you, you were getting different stories and different, you know, facts from your mayor, from your governor, from the health departments and the scientists, from the president, um, and, and they, none of them agreed. And this, I don't think this was a willful act of disruption and, and uh, you know, subversion. It was just, people were just saying what they thought, but nobody really knew for sure what was happening. And, and, and the chaos and confusion in that was, was breathtaking <laughs> and, and, and disturbing and confusing um, and you know, constant contradiction of what you should be doing or what was really happening. And then meanwhile, you had this kind of uh, World Cup Super Bowl, you know, ticker where, uh, you know, it, it, it almost seemed like we were saying, hey, the U.S. is number one. That's us, you know, because we had the most contaminations and the most deaths. But that was also, I don't think intentionally, a kind of fake news because they didn't know how many people had been exposed to it or how it was affecting them. But they just kept ratcheting up these numbers that were just driving people, you know, crazy. And, and, and suddenly, 
No one's paying attention to that. You know, that, that what's, what's been happening in the streets has just like shoved it all aside, like it didn't, like it never mattered. And now we have a new thing to worry about. So great, you know, we can, we can put that aside. It doesn't matter anymore. Now we can, now we can worry about something else. And, well, it and seems he, like that's been our lives for the past while now. It's like, you know, yeah. what is, two weeks ago it was COVID. And, you know, two weeks before that, it was something else huge. And then it was, it's always, and we've become numb. And, and I was joking with my friends the other day. I'm like, I, I'm assuming next week the aliens are going to come down and start, you know. Like, <laughs> well, you know, the, the, there, were, there were primary, there were like six uh, primary votes across the country yesterday. There was, there was hardly, I had to dig into the back pages of Politico to even make sure that it was happening because there was no, there was no sign of it, which is really unbelievable you know the extent where um and this is you know it concerns me that that the what we're seeing for good or bad is uh, the power of, of of media right now and the way it can be amplified uh <clears throat> and constantly stoked um and, and I, I just couldn't get over the fact that people were like actually lining up to talk to cameras um, because everybody wants their 15 minutes. Everybody expects that the world should hear what they're thinking and what they're saying, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, bringing down the system <clears throat> or telling people to go home or just, uh, what they're, what they're pissed about. And, and, uh, I'd never seen that before. There was, there was, people were not respecting the fact that Okay, you know, there's a there's a news camera there, and you walk around in the background, and maybe you know you make a signal so your your family sees it at home. They would literally like they were trying to grab the microphone <laughs> and staring into the camera <laughs> and starting to say what they wanted, and 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 the poor news guys were were like being overwhelmed by people who were like, okay, let me talk, you know, and this kind of attitude of what I, what I'm going to say to the people at home is just as valid as what you're going to say. So let, let me talk now. And you can see them like struggling and, and retreating away from, from what they were trying to cover because it was, it was trying to, subs they were, they were trying to get the camera. They were, they were just going to run with it because they're used to having that perspective. They're, they, they are content creators. They're used to making videotapes that get repeated and shared and that's new. So where that's going to lead us, I don't know, but it sure is uh, it's interesting and scary at the same time. It's not a boring time to be alive. No, not boring. So no. where do you see, um, where do you see the future going from here? You know, where do you see, what do you see in the cards moving? Uh, well, I think there's a, there's, there, again, as, as I've been saying, there's, there's, there are two, two tracks and, and as uh, <clears throat> you know, as uh, you know, as as people have said in the past, uh, you know, uh, William Gibson talked about how the you know the future has happened. It's just not evenly distributed yet, right? So we we live in that kind of world, and um, at some level, I mean, look at uh, you know the the first uh, spaceship. A manned spaceship by a, that's not that wasn't launched by by a country, <clears throat> Mr. Musk's uh, SpaceX. Uh, <clears throat> you know that's that was very historical. People hardly noticed. <laughs> it, bar it barely got any time uh, because there was so many so so many other things in the news. Uh, but there's there's real change going about. But how do we make sure that people are paying attention or that you know that that it matters to them? Uh, and that's going to be that's going to be difficult because there are so many avenues of like we we're saying of reality and so many places you can park your reality and you can actually just check out and enter a virtual world um, and just hang out with you know uh, ready, skateboarders or you know ready player one <clears throat> yeah and all the other things that are coming from it and and VR is becoming more inverse, uh, uh, you know, immersive and it's becoming more uh, three dimensional and it's becoming uh, more participatory and you know our avatars of ourselves this has been going on for a while that's taking a leap forward so, and and people are suggesting that uh, reality itself 
is just an avatar reflection of of of, uh, <clears throat> of our imagination or some fractals. other. Humans yeah. are like uh, fractals, right? So we create little avatars, and eventually they all become self-aware, and then they'll start creating little avatars, and then those yeah. become self-aware. And then yeah. it makes you think, what are the avatars that created us? Mm -hmm. And we became self-aware. Yeah. So, so that, uh, you know, that's something we have to deal with. In fact, it's very hard to herd all the cats onto one platform uh, before we even have a, a discussion of what we want to do as a, as a society, and as a country. <clears throat> but, uh, but then at the same time, there, this breakdown is, is, is uh, you know, we've been through this before. We've, we've seen empires and societies rise and fall. We've seen just in the short history of our country, um, we've had pandemics. We, we've had economic meltdowns. We've had constitutional crises. Um, and and we've, we've managed to get our act back together and, 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 uh, and, and realign, you know, the, I mean, this income inequality on a, personal level, on a community level, on a social level, on a global level, I think is really one of the, the big logs in the fire right now. So, I, think it's the, I think it's one of the biggest. Um, yeah. I mean, it, I, you know, I've been, I've been screaming about this for a while. Um, you, you put income inequality and some sort of match, some sort of spark that lights uh, an incident where you have rapid unemployment, and that was COVID for us. Um, and then you have another spark, you know, given some time, once those unemployment checks run out, then you're going to have riots and, and all sorts of issues. Look, and and that's what happened. we're starting to get there. Right. I mean, Look what happened. You had people. It's, just, it's yeah. that one spark and people just had it that, you know, I'm even noticing it in my personal life when I go to the store or, you know, people are very much on edge. They're, wait, they're waiting for something to snap at. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the things that, you know, every, I think everybody is getting a little nervous about <laughs> because, uh, you know, the, this sudden uh, army of, of jobless and in many cases now, you know, you have uh, landlords <clears throat> in, 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 certainly in, in a number of, uh, cities and, and uh, states that are being empowered to kick people out and you know that really is not constructive because you're just creating an army of people that are frustrated homeless ho homeless hopeless hungry, hungry mad and hungry. then yeah, hungry and and then all you gotta all you gotta do is like dr drop a little spark like uh you know george floyd and and look what happens you know they have a conflagration and by the way, a lot of these people have just found that when they get in masses like this, they're able to overcome a city and loot mm -hmm. and sell stuff on eBay and make a little bit of money. You know, uh, I think there was, a, I think the Fed came out and said last year that um, over almost 50% of the population doesn't have a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars in savings in case of an emergency. So you know, you just put that all together, and there's gasoline all over the floor, just waiting for that spark. Yeah, literally in many cases. Yeah. Uh, so so, you know, I I think we are at a critical facing a, a real test of. Um, like I was saying, you know, uh, the big difference between now and say, you know, 40 or 75 years ago is people didn't have the megaphone of technology and social media to speak up and organize themselves. Organize. Like instantly. Instantly. Right? So, so it, it's, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a powerful w weapon that these disenfranchised folks have that wasn't there before. On the flip side, we have a similar ability to to react more quickly to um, helping people and and being responsive and, and hearing people's 
uh, needs and disappointments and what they're angry about. And, and we're seeing that too. So uh, we'll see, you know, that's, that's the big test of our time, I think, is how we're gonna get out of this uh, <clears throat> and, and what side we're gonna come out. And most of the time, this, this idea of an analog uh, destination, you know, that we're gonna go this way or that way, in my experience of watching things, we usually we go both ways at the same time. <laughs> you know, there's there's uh, this like this idea of, of 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 the future not being distributed. So our experiences are not the same, and we can go very far into a, a dimension of what we think and what we want to be surrounded with and, and who we want to be surrounded by. Especially now with this idea that you know you don't want to be infected. By other people, so I just threw on a whole nother divisive skin that was already, you know, creaking from the weight of change and, and contradiction and uh, people undermining each other's realities. So that's a big, that's a big to-do list. But but there's no turning back. Um, that that's for sure. So yeah, I don't know if you have any suggestions on. <laughs> how to fix the world but uh you know yeah well i mean that that was um that big question right i think that um you know some of the things that I'm working with some companies on uh is trying to find ways through applications um and through technology and through businesses to um allow content creators to monetize their data monetize their content so more people can um, find alternative means of uh, prosperity during this time. Yep. Um, so that's been one of the biggest passions of mine. Um, and I think it's, it's very much needed during this time period. I think it's key because uh, technology has brought tremendous opportunities and world changing uh, you know, impact for a long time now. And, and that's another thing we gotta look at. You know, it's like, can technology go beyond just being highly effective and highly profitable and really become the change agent that, that it was supposed to be? You know, and instead of just uh, selling convenience, um, can, can we selling use- freedom. What's that? Selling freedom instead of convenience. Yeah, freedom and community. Take their power back, owning and, their mind, owning their data, owning their lives. That, that's that's my mantra. So yeah. We're on the same page. <laughs> great. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Do you want to uh, t tell us a little bit more about your book before, or how we could find it, or? Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm writing it now, so it's too early to get into all that. Uh, so probably not till the fall. Uh, but but we're, we're we're right on the territory of what's interesting about this, you know. But the other part is the, the fun of going through uh, the history of intellectual property, how it's evolved, <clears throat> how it affects our lives in in very um, in very substantial material ways. It's not just about ideas, you know. It's everything from the way we look at art to how we listen to music. Um, to how we digest the news um, and how we define our, our realities, like you were saying. And, and I think really importantly, there's an opportunity here to how do we make sure that people are being um, compensated for what they create. And that, that's a new frontier that, that has to be faced. And um, given all the other impacts of technology and how they're um, using our time and our, and our talents, um, whether it's for fun or something more constructive, um, we, we, we got to work on that. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to help to do. Likewise. All right. Awesome. Thank, thank, thank you, you. Garcia. And, uh, till we meet again, brother. Indeed. Talk soon. Bye. All right.